<laughs> oh man. So my name is uh he looking serious, you know happy? <laughs> my name is uh PK Kersey and I'm from Brooklyn. Anybody from Brooklyn here? Yeah. Alright, cool, I feel comfortable. Um, I grew up in Brooklyn and I'm gonna talk to you about one word today. That word is choices. Choices. Okay? Choices. So what's the first letter in choices? The C, which is change. I grew up in Brooklyn. My mother worked for Verizon for 30 years, and my father worked for New York City Transit for 25 years. So their definition for success was work for a company and then retire. That was their definition for success. So that's what they taught me and my brother and my sister. So in turn, my sister's been a teacher for uh, about 15 years. My brother's been in banking for about 12 years, and I worked for the Department of Motor Vehicle for 24 years. Anybody familiar with the Department of Motor Vehicle? Oh, yeah. There's some great people that work there, right? <laughs> so for 24 years, I was responsible for giving out licenses, registrations, tests. Uh, I, was, I ended up being the manager of the DMV on 31st Street. Uh, and in 2017, I decided to leave. One of the reasons why I decided to leave, DMV is about 25% male, 75% female. And one of the reasons because of that was uh, a lot of the guys, they would come to the interviews and they weren't dressed properly. So just think about that for a second. They came to the interview on time, had good resumes, but they weren't dressed properly. How many people think, there's no right or wrong, how many people think that it's fair that they weren't hired because they weren't dressed properly. Raise your hand. Okay. How many people think that it is fair that they were that they weren't hired because they weren't dressed properly? Okay. First, first question. How many people think that it's not that it's fair? First of all, it's fair that they didn't get hired. How many people think that's the right thing that they shouldn't have got hired because they weren't dressed properly? They should have got hired. Should not. Right, should not. How many people think they still should have gotten hired even though they weren't dressed properly? So it's about 60, 40, right? So I was basically on both sides of it. I understood both sides because when I started, when I had the interview for DMV, I didn't have anything to wear. I didn't have a suit or anything to wear. So I, didn't, I wasn't even gonna go to the interview, but my pastor actually bought me a suit, shirt and tie because he knew I needed it. So because he did that, it kind of made me feel good, especially when I put on the suit and I wound up getting a job. And I worked there for 24 years because my parents defined success for me for working for a company. That would they define success for me. But if I didn't get that suit, I wouldn't have went. And a lot of these guys are going to these interviews and they're not dressed properly and they're not getting these jobs. And I felt like terrible because I was one of maybe seven people that was interviewing them so even though I may have understood their plight or their situation, other people didn't understand, didn't care. They only judged them by how they looked. So just think about that, they weren't getting jobs. And I'm from Brooklyn. If we can't get work legally, guess what we're gonna do? Illegal activity, which is wound up, a lot of my friends wound up going to prison and doing different things because they couldn't get jobs. So I felt bad about that. So that's one of the reasons why I left DMV after 24 years because and we started me and my brother we started this organization called That Suit Shoe where we collect suits and ties and we give them to people that need them for different opportunities. So that was something that was big and dear to me because I wanted to help. I saw these guys not getting work and I wanted to help. So what's the next letter? H, which basically is our habits. A lot of times our habits have a big effect on whether or not we're successful in life. If you ask, somebody, if you ask everybody here how many want to be successful, just about everybody raise their hand pretty much. Right? You don't have to raise your hand, I'm saying everybody raise their hand. But when you think about our habits, how big our habits, or a bigger role our habits play, and you can start giving um, you can start giving out the uh, the top. You give them, okay. So how big our habits play. So just think about this. I'm gonna spell something. And I want you guys to tell me what I'm spelling. But you gotta say it real loud, okay? Everybody follow me? Yeah. So I'm gonna spell something, you tell me what I'm spelling. 
What does P.O.P. spell? Ah. Good, so now everybody say it real loud. What does P.O.P. spell? Ah. What does M.O.P. spell? Ma. What does T.O.P. spell? Ta. What does P.O.P. spell? Ma. When you get your green light, what do you do? Stop. Oh. How many people said stop? <laughs> Don't be ashamed. How many people said stop? Right. I work for DMV. There's a green light to go. Right? But why did you say stop? Because you got into a habit. So people say, well, I'm smart. I'm intelligent. But habits even override knowledge. Even That's why you can have intelligent, smart people that have terrible habits. So it's not because how smart you are. So habits can be broken. Look, it took five seconds to form that habit. Mm -hmm. Five seconds. Imagine a habit that you've been doing your whole life, how difficult that will be to stop. So success can be derailed because of habits, poor habits. Look, I wanted to be successful. My day was, how many hours in a day? So I worked for DMV. We never got out of there. I was there maybe nine hours. So how many I got left? 15. 15. So it was about an hour and a half travel each way. So that's three hours. So how many I got left? 